Hello and welcome to part 6 of SAS and Compass for Web Designers. This is the final part and we have a lot of stuff to cover, so we are going to split the lessons in two. In this first lesson, we are going to style the newsletter and in the next lesson, we are going to quickly style the footer. So we are going to start out by opening up Sublime Text. And you have already noticed that I've been making all these comments in here. We have our variables, we have mixins, and so on. But because SAS offers us the flexibility to split these things up in files, I think it would be a really good idea to do that. And that way we would keep ourselves organized. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to fast forward most of it. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it theme. Now in this folder I'm going to keep all the CSS that I think that I am not going to reuse all the time. So this way I'm going to try to separate the reusable code like mixins from the actual template files. Okay, now I'm done creating and naming the files. And you actually saw in the process that I decided that I'm going to have a file called home and inside the home file, I'm going to have my introduction slider and my pitch because they are all going to be in the home page. And I just thought that it would make sense if they would be in a home file. So this is my screen.scss file now. And I just think that this feels a lot more clean. And now anybody could figure out where to go if they wanted to style the navigation, for example. Now notice that I have also named all my files with an underscore. And if you do this, please remember to name your files with an underscore in front of them. Because SAS is going to automatically compile all of your files that aren't with an underscore. So if you're not going to have an underscore before it, you're going to have a bunch of files in the CSS folder. So now I can just hit Command P and let's say I want to open up the home file. Now notice here that Sublime Text thinks that I might want to open up the home.scss.c file. Now this is actually a SAS cache file and because Sublime Text is watching the whole folder for me, it has just indexed the file. Now we can fix that. And if you're using Sublime Text, you can just follow along these steps. You have to open up the preferences. Then you go to settings default and just scroll down until you find file exclude patterns. And just go to the end of the long list, add in a comma, and now a star.scssc. And now when you save that, you can close down the tab and hit Command P again. And now it's not going to try to find the SCSS C files. Now SAS also caches the PNG files and you have a PNG C file here as well. But that doesn't bother me because I'm not going to try to look up images right now. So now I'm going to type home and I can easily jump to my home styles. Now let's make a new file and this is going to be our footer. 
add in an underscore in front of the file. And now I'm going to import the footer. So import theme footer. Save that. And now we can start styling our footer. And now let's also make a file for our newsletter. So new file underscore newsletter dot scss. Add in here as well. And we're pretty much good to go. So let's start out by styling our newsletter. So the first thing to do is say class newsletter. First, I'm going to set the syntax to be scss. And now I'm going to include full width. And I'm going to extend the pattern class. And we saw what this does in the previous lesson. Now we just need to move the box around a little bit. Set the font size to be 14 pixels. And now let's open up the index.html file. So here you can see that we have a section of class newsletter. And then we have a div class left and a div class right. In the left side, we are going to have our join our newsletter. And on the right side, we are just going to have some sample text here. And also in the right side, we are going to have a button that says sign up. Now what we are going to do here is first we are going to style the bo both of the divs that are inside the newsletter and they are both going to have the same amount of padding. I'm multiplying the padding by 1.5 because vertically we need a little more padding than we're going to have horizontally right now. Set the margins to be zero just to be sure. And now we can set a background color of lighten, background color 2%. So this function right here is going to lighten the color that is inside of the variable background color by 2%, no matter what color is it. Now let's set both of the divs to have a height of 50 pixels and give them a border of one pixel solid. Now we can style the left div. Now let's open up Chrome. And here in the final result, you can see that we have just a tiny little gradient going on in here. And we're going to make that gradient with Compass. Now, Compass doesn't offer any revolutionary gradient tool, but still, this is a useful mix-in because of the many vendor prefixes. So we're going to add include background. And now I can say that I want a linear gradient. And my linear gradient is going to be from negative 77 degrees. And I just picked those degrees off of the blending effects in the PSD file. And now I'm going to lighten the background color by 1%. So it's going to go from a little lighter to a little darker. So now if I save that, Compass should compile the file correctly. So let's open up it in Chrome, reload the page. And yep, you can see that we have a correct gradient. Uh, we have a little lighter color in here and it comes a little darker in here. Back to Sublime Text. Now this next bit is going to be a little tricky and it's going to be blank work specific, but if you use any other grid system, um, you can use probably the box sizing property and achieve the same result. So now I'm going to say at include container, and that's the synonym of full width, and the container is going to be three columns wide and we're going to subtract the padding times two. And that's because we have a padding in here, which is variable padding to the left and padding to the right. So those are two paddings. And also I'm going to add in one pixel and one pixel because I am going to have a border on the right set to zero. Now over here we have set a border of one pixel so that means that the border is going to add in two pixels to the box model. But because I set the border on the right to be zero, then horizontally border is going to affect only one pixel for the box model. And finally, we need to style our headings. If we look at our HTML, then here you see we have joined to our newsletter in an H4 and amazing news just for you in an H5. So we're going to style both of them to have a margin of padding divided by two and set the color to be dark font. 
And then finally, we are going to alter the H5 and set the font size to be 12 pixels. And we are going to lighten the color of light font by 10%. Now, if I save that, view that in Chrome, you can see that it starts to look like it's supposed to. And now let's style the right div as well. And this also is going to be a container and then it's going to be a container of nine columns. And we're also going to subtract the padding times two and also two pixels from the border. Set the font family to be variable M font. And we are also going to style the EMs. Set the margin top to be padding divided by two. And now here in the EM, we are going to add in an include of column seven. And that's because we want to leave two columns on the right side for the button element. And now when I save that, I get an error from compass. And that's because I forgot to add in a semicolon in here. And now if I save that again and open it up in Chrome, now I can see that everything is nice and aligned, except that the font size over here looks a bit too small. So let's go back and fix that. And sure enough, I set the font size of H5 to be one pixel instead of 12. Now let's compare that to our final result. And we have still something missing here. Now the font size of this is actually a little different from here. And that's because we actually have a slightly different setting in our heading size. So let's go back to general. And here we're using the include set heading size. And let's set the heading size starting from 24 pixels instead of 26. And we open up Chrome. You can see that this looks exactly the same in both places. So now we need to style our sign up button and let's go back to sublime text and start styling. And I'm just going to give us some more space. And the first thing we are going to do is we're going to set the border radius to be 25 pixels and we're going to give it a lot of padding. Vertically, it's going to be the same padding as everywhere, but horizontally we want to give it about 33 pixels and we also want to float it to the right set the font size to 13 pixels and the font color to white now save that and look at it in chrome reload the page and that starts to look like the result we are after so now we need to apply some colors and now i'm going to use a gradient so first add include background, add a semicolon at the end. This is going to be a linear gradient. And at first we are going to saturate and lighten the button base color. And we're going to lighten it by 10% and we're going to saturate it by 5%. Add a comma at the end. And the second color is going to be a darker version of the button base color. Save that and open it up in Chrome. Reload the page. There we go. This is a nice looking gradient. Now I'm going to add the border. And the border is actually going to be the button base color. And now I'm going to add in a box shadow. Again, add include box shadow. And we are actually going to have two box shadows. The first one is going to have this color. And 0, 0, 0 as all the offsets and a four pixel blur. And the second shadow is going to be inside and there's a function called fade out. And I'm going to fade out white color and set it to 0 0.75, which means that the opacity of the color is going to be 25%. And there's also a synonym for fade out and it's called transparentize. I just think that fade out is a lot more easy to remember and type. So I tend to use fade out. If you want to use transparentize instead, you can just go ahead because it doesn't really matter. It's your own preference. So I'm fading out white by 75%. That leaves 
opacity of 25%, set a horizontal offset to be 0, vertical 1 pixel, blur is going to be 0, and spread is going to be 1 pixel. And we want it to be inset. Now when I save that, I get an error that I forgot a semicolon in here. And there we go, our button looks exactly the same. Now we need to add in the hover effect. So I'm opening up the sublime text again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy all of this and say ampersand hover, paste it all in here. And now I'm going to say that the button base color is going to be button base color. But we're going to make some adjustments using saturate and lighten. So we're going to lighten the base color by 5% and we're going to saturate it by 10%. Now if I save that, you can see that we have our nice hover effect. Now let's go back to Sublime Text. And I actually think that I might reuse this kind of button once every now and then. So I want to make a mixing out of it, and it's really easy to do because we already used a button base color variable. So I'm just going to take all of this and I'm going to cut it out and instead of this, I'm going to say at include round button and pass in the button base color. And now I'm not going to save the file yet because I'm going to get an error. First, I'm going to open up my mixins, make a new at mixin, call it round underscore button, pass in a button base color, and just paste all of that in here. Now I'm saving the mixins. And now I can save my newsletter.scss as well. And just to be sure, I'm going to take this color right here and paste it in as a default mixin setting. So if I forget to use a color on this mixin, then I'm going to fall back to this orange color. And that means that I can actually get rid of it in here. And I can just call my mixin saying at include round button, and it's going to apply the default color. And preview that in Chrome. And you can see that the button still works, and it still looks exactly the same as it does in our final result.